When we partner with the Holy Spirit, our Christianity will not be boring anymore. Holy Spirit is exciting because He is dynamic and He is going to speak to you, He is going to speak through you. And it is the uh, privilege for all the believers to really experience Him and uh, wherever you are, not only on Sunday, but wherever you are. Amen. And not only that, I do believe that God has given us a prophetic word, which is um, He is going to grow us with what? With His Word. So that's why we are doing training after training, training after training, school after school, you know, classes and seminars like uh, we have never been, uh, that, that, that we have never done in the past couple of years because we want to equip you. And uh, so again, register and uh, space is limited, but I know that you will be equipped when you join the class. We will start on June the 4th. And it's going to be for six weeks, the, uh, the first module, and then break, and then another six weeks. So please come, and it's not only one session, so you will not uh, regret it. You will be um, benefit from all these trainings. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you ready to hear the Word of God? All right, this side is ready. How about this side? All right, that's better. How about both sides now? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And uh, today I just want to share to you from, uh, actually, if I, if I want to narrow down what I'm going to share to you today, it's, it's uh, I'm going to focus on one of the announcements. And uh, one of the announcements is about the seminar that we are going to have, is, which is the uh, Maximize Manhood. And um, I want you to know that it has nothing to do with your testosterone. <laughs> and uh, it has a lot to do with your integrity. It has a lot to do with responsibility. It has a lot to do with uh, maturity. It has a lot to do that uh, we, we can grow in our Christian faith and be a man. Can you say be a man? So we will maximize our manhood, okay? Our character, not, not again, I, it has nothing to do with, uh, with, with testosterone. This is something to do with the inner man. So uh, with that, I want you to open your Bible to the book of Acts chapter 13. Book of Acts chapter 13, and uh, we are going to look at several verses today from different books and uh, We'll see and we'll know that uh, the Holy Spirit will talk to us. If you got it, say, I got it. Okay. Got it? All right. You got it? You need more time? All right. Everybody got it. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. I'm reading from the uh, New King James Version. And when he had removed him, he raised up from them, for them David as king to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, uh, what? A man. Can you say a man? Can you say that again? A man. A man after my own heart who will do all my will. A man after my own heart who will do all my will. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, speak to us again, O oh God. We open our hearts. Come on, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I open my heart. Plant the seed of the word in my life and let the seed grow. Change my life, Lord. Take over. Speak to me. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. And let me read to you again. I found David, the son of Jesse, a man, a man, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. Now, when you read the story about David, it is... Uh, Obvious that David was not a perfect man. He fell into sin, he fell into adultery, and he even killed um, his, um, his right-hand man, one of these soldiers, and uh, he, he did it intentionally. But he is a man after God's own heart because he is a man that did not did not hide his sin, he, re, he, he did not rebel, he, he repented and he came to God and we, he worshipped God and he, he wants to receive all of the correction that God gave to him. 
And uh, it is very important to know that God is raising men. God is raising, I'm, I'm not talking about God is not raising women. God is raising all men and women. But today I'm going to focus on men. Can you say men again? All right. Now let's read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. It says, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of, of, uh, of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So the head of woman is who? Man. The head of woman is who? Man. Man. But uh, even as I read this verse, I, I felt some tension within you women because uh, some of you begin to think... Um, um, well, um, how can I submit to this man? Maybe some of you, uh, some of you wives, you have that, that struggle within you. And I don't blame you because I remember many years ago, I think about 25, 27 years ago, when I uh, listened to one of the conferences that Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole conducted with his wife, uh, Nancy, uh, they are the parents of Paul Lewis Cole, who is going to come and is going to be one of the speakers in our uh, seminar in June. And uh, when Nancy Cole preached among women, she mentioned about women, you all need to, need to submit to your own husbands. And you know what they said? All these women, about 10,000 women at that time, you know what they said? Yes, we want to submit to our husbands. We have no problem to submit to our men. But give us the men. <laughs> it is so true, you know, because there are not so many men. But the, the <laughs> in fact, there are many, many uh, child in a man's body. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not blaming any of you because none of us know any better. That's why we need to be equipped by the Word of God. We need to be equipped by His Word. So we all will grow together. But especially men, men. And I will show you why I want to focus on men today because in the book of Genesis chapter 3, let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 3 starting from verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Notice the serpent in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. It mentioned about serpent. In the last book of the Bible, mentioned about the old serpent. In the first book, mentioned about serpent. The uh, last book in the book of Revelation, it's, it's mentioned about the dragon. And it, is, it, it symbolized Satan, the devil, the enemy, our enemy. So our enemy is not the person next to us. All right, so don't elbow the person next to you, okay? Our enemy is not next, sitting next to us. And the woman said to the serpent, verse 2, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. The next sentence, it says, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. So in this verse, you need to know that the husband was not somewhere out there. No, no, no. The husband was next to her. But the husband, the man, the man did not function as a husband. The man did not give protection to the wife. The husband just follow along. And the husband did not convey the word of God that he heard firsthand from God. God talked to Adam, but Adam did not convey it to his wife. 
Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed, they, how do you pronounce this? Sewed, they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves what? Made themselves what? Oh, covering. When I, I read this verse many times, and uh, I have the tendency to think, to think that the covering that they made was around their uh, from the waist down. Where did I get that idea? Do you get that same idea like me? Yeah. Where did you get that idea from? From movies. But it talks about what? It talks about covering. So when I read this verse again, I do believe that, that when they... They, that when, when they made the covering, it's not only talking about covering, covering certain parts of their body, but it's like they, want, they need the covering. They seek coverings. They need coverings. But because they fell into sin, they hide from God. Let's continue reading the next verses. And they heard the son of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, where are you? Where are you? This is not a question of information. This is a question of invitation. God is looking for Adam. And Eve, God is looking for you. And in this context, as I want to emphasize on the man, God is looking, God is asking, God is inviting the man. Come on now, where are you? Where are you? I miss you. I love you. I want you. Why are you hiding yourself from me? <laughs> come, come, I invite you. You don't need to hide from, from me. God is ready to welcome you again. And then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Verse 10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. This is the answer from who? From the man. Maybe you are the man in the house today or maybe you're watching via the internet and you have been hiding from God. God is asking each one of you right now, man, where are you? I miss you. I invite you to come back. Don't run away from me. Run to me. Run to me. Come close to me. And then, verse 11, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then, verse 12, then, then what? Then the man, then what? The man, then the man. Can you say the man? Yeah. Say that again, the man. Yeah. <laughs> then the man said, the woman, whoo, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. So blame shifting here and then verse 13. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat what? You shall eat what? You shall eat dust all the days of your life. Have you ever seen snake eating dust, chewing dust, munching dust? No, a snake eats what? Gopher, rats. Uh, but uh, please understand that we are made of what? We are made of dust, men and women. We are made of dust. And uh, from dust we came from and to the dust we will go back. And uh, if we feed our fleshly carnality, the serpent will have a lot of food. You just feed the serpent because if you live on, the, on your fleshly desire, the serpent will be fat. The last verse, this is a prophetic word. 
And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between what? Between your seed, come on, say it together, between your seed and her seed, between your seed and her seed, between your seed and her seed. He, he is mentioned specifically, it's not about she, but he, he will bruise your hand and you shall bruise his heel. This is a prophetic message that the, uh, the, the, the seed is talking about Jesus. Jesus is coming. Jesus will crush. Jesus will bruise the head of the serpent. Now, I am grateful, I am privileged to, to travel, to meet with different kind of people all of this past, I don't know how many, uh, 25 years. Uh, the Lord has opened so many doors that I've met uh, so many people from different, different cultures, different um, level, different uh, race, different colors, different languages. And uh, I have the privilege, and I'm, I'm grateful that God has opened door since uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago, or 21 years ago to be exact, that uh, I begin to uh, meet with uh, dignitaries, with uh, high-ranking government officials, people of influence, business leaders, uh, people with significant uh, uh, finance from different nations, and uh, when I uh, God, w when God opened another door for me to meet with uh, the uh, academicians, is that how you pronounce it? The academicians, uh, people of academics, uh, it, it's like high high level education, and I've met some people. And uh, some of these people, they invited me to come to speak to their places, to their nation. And these people, they, they received Nobel Prize. And uh, it's just, wow, God, uh, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm privileged. And with that, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. And, uh, but at the, uh, at the same time, um, not only that I have, God has opened the door for me to meet with those kind of people, God gave me the opportunity to meet with the people, the poor of the poorest. They are so poor. And I visited their, their homes where they live. And uh, like in one particular place, you know, they, this, these people, there were about uh, 1,000 families. They live under the bridge. They live under the concrete. And you know what I'm talking about. And uh, under the freeways. And when I visited their places, talking about 1,000 families, and when it's hot, and when you live, when you live under those bridge, you know, it's just, it, it is hot, hot. And uh, if, if, you, if you want to go to their places, you cannot just walk under the bridge walking like this. No, you, you, you won't make it. You have to really scoop down, and, and yes, you, you have to do this, and then, then you'll, you'll sit down, you talk to them, you fellowship with them under the bridge. It's so hot, so humid, sweaty. And they, I visited their place, but they live there. And I have the privilege also to, to meet with the people who live in the garbage dumpsters. It's just a lot. When I opened the door of my car, you know, I was welcomed by thousands and thousands and thousands of flies. And these people in this one particular area, they, they, they just praise the Lord. They praise the Lord. I've, I've met people who has uh, no, no education, not even elementary school. They, they don't know what education is. They, they don't know what school is. And uh, I, I, I have the chance, uh, many chances actually to, to attend many um, meetings when, when there were reconciliation between, between races. Not only between the black and whites, between the Hispanics also with the German, between the, uh, the Dutch and the Japanese, the Korean. And you're talking about the background of uh, world war. 
and uh, I, I, I have a chance to even uh, facilitate in some of the meetings. And there was a reconciliation take place. And you know what? When we are talking about recon re reconciliation, it's not only between, between uh, your skin color. Do you realize that uh, the Chinese also fight with the Chinese? You realize that the blacks also fight with the blacks? The Indonesian fight with the Indonesian too, right? So it has, it has nothing to do with your language, with your culture, uh, but it has a lot to do with the insight, with the insight of the human being. And I have learned, having the opportunity to meet with different kinds of people from different cultures and languages and everything, I learned that they have something in common. That is, they face the same problems that we do. They have the same, they, they face the same problem. They fight. And I remember there were times I have to break up fights. I have to break up fights between what? Not, not between race, not between um, different languages or color of skin. Fight between husband and wife. And I remember, oh, after so many years of marriage, 15 years of marriage, 20 years of marriage, then suddenly, boom, it's like an ex explosion. They want to get a divorce. That caused me to learn about my perception of humanity. Having learned from all those people and observed their lives. And when I talk to them personally, I, I receive emails, I talk to them. And many of them, you know, they, they talk to me privately and I hold my wife and I, sometimes I minister with my wife too, you know, uh, we, we hold so many secrets of, of people. And, uh, you know, they tell what they tell, they told us what they are really going through. Somebody would come and say, I'm living in hell and nobody knows it. Please pray for me, pastor. Oh, pastor, another woman said, Pastor, I didn't come to church for two Sundays because my eye was black and my lip was busted. Help me. Please pray for me. Do you know that every 15 seconds there is a woman beaten to death by somebody who says he loves One in every five women were molested between ages of five and 15. And yet when we come to church, seems like everything is okay. We're just skipping and dancing and we have fun, but nobody wants to talk about the real issue. And I wonder in my own mind, how did we get there? It's true that the enemy attacks women. It is true. The enemy wants women into captivity by their past, by their look, by their body images, by their ages. And isn't that funny? I noticed that some people with straight hair, they want to curl it. People with curly hair, they want to straighten it. Somebody who is tall complain, I, I'm, I'm, I'm too tall, I'm too tall. Somebody who is short, oh, I wish I'm tall. Oh, I don't like my, my nose. I want to have a nose like so and so. Why? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> maybe it's, uh, what do you call that? Pointed nose. 
And what's the, uh, the, the opposite of pointed nose? <laughs> hey, let me, let, me, let me make it clear. You are beautiful as you are. Let's, let's, let's be real, okay? The way you comb your hair, I think the way you comb your hair, the way I comb my hair is the best that I want me look. But, uh, but maybe it's not the best way to you. Maybe you like your hair. Maybe some, you, you comb your hair so nice. You, it took you 20 minutes just to comb your hair. And you look, you, you like it. But somebody look at you like, hey, your hair look funny. <laughs> so when it's good, it's good for you. It's just you are created beautiful. Tell your neighbor, I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. <laughs> so the enemy, the enemy wants women into captivity. God can set you free. There is a difference between captivity and prisoners. Captivity, just, the, the enemy just wants to, 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 to captive you. But a prisoner is because of your mistakes, because of your fault. Women, listen to me, listen to me good. And every woman say, Amen. <laughs> All right. Yes, the enemy is attacking women. But the enemy is in no way as much after you as he is after the man. Why did I say that? For it is the seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the serpent as it is written in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. It is the seed, the seed of the woman. So the enemy is after the woman, but actually the goal is after the man. The, the enemy knows that if he can destroy the man, he doesn't have to destroy you, women. He can destroy the house. Women, you may have some challenges. You struggle. You, you, you're frustrated. You have so many tribulations because is it possible that it is because you have no covering? Again, 1 Corinthians 11, 3 says, But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole, the, the late Ed Cole, the father of Paul Cole, said, When a man acts like a child, it forces his wife to act like his mother. <laughs> we laugh. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> The enemy knows that if he can get the male seat, he can leave the house uncovered. That's why the Old Testament happened and the New Testament happened similar. Moses, when he was, when he was born, you know, the king of Egypt Make, made an announcement, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, then you, then she shall live. This is talking about the battle. The attack is against the male seed. When Jesus was born, you know, Herod said, 
put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem, Bethlehem and all its district from two years old and under. Oh. I want us to really understand that the warfare is real. That's why I want you to know that the reason why we have the seminar because we want to equip you. And I want you to make effort. I want you to make effort on different, different levels. And this, this seminar is not only for husbands, it's not only for fathers, it's for men. 13 years and up. And I want you to make time and, and, and wives, if your husband has not re registered yet, register for him. And if you know a friend that has not registered, ask him to register. And if you say, oh, that day, pastor, I work. Well, I still have one month, take day off. I'm serious. Because I want to see men to be men in the house. This is, not the, this is not a critics. This is an encouragement. There is a need. There is a need. Take day off. And not, not, not only that, another level, the third level. What was the first level? You forget. Okay, good. <laughs> Wife, you buy tickets for your husband. The second level... Take day off. The third level, invite your friends. The third level, you invite your friends, even your friends who do not go to church. Maybe your friend at work. Because if you change the man, you will change the house. You will, be, you will be, bring blessing to them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. So we need, to, we need to really pray. We need to make a declaration. Come on, come on, let's, let, let, let's stand up and make a declaration. Let's, let's make a declaration right now. I'm not done yet. You think I'm done? Not yet. <laughs> make a declaration. Make a declaration. Everybody pray right now. Make a declaration that the enemy cannot destroy the man. The enemy cannot destroy the man. Whether you are a father, whether you are a grandfather, you are a husband or a boy. You make a declaration right now. The enemy, you, you say to the enemy, off limits right now in the name of Jesus. Come on now. I cannot hear your shout. Make a declaration. It's a war. It's a war time. War. Yes. Open your mouth and make a declaration. God. Oh, Lord. Oh, we declare the man will be restored. We declare, oh God, your will, will will be done in the man's life. You will raise the man, oh God. You will raise up the man, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. And my heart is for all the young, for the young men who have spent Years in their life. And I'm looking at this generation here. You have spent years in your life looking at the mirror, looking for an image of a father that you never saw. And you have no real reflection of real mascul masculinity. And listen, young people, I'm saying this not to blame your fathers, but your fathers didn't know any better. I didn't know any better. My parents didn't know any better. But when I received Jesus, I learned from the word. I learned from mighty men of God. I learned from mighty women of God. I, I watched their families. I, I watched how, how they live. And uh, this is the cry of the younger generation. And because there is no father in the house, they allow anybody, anybody, whatever face they hang on the wall, they became what, they, what was on the wall. They look at certain people, 
post it in the wall and oh, I want to become like him, I want to become like him. Why? Because they are looking for a father. Oh, Jesus. I learned that um, I thank God that uh, some, some men, when we, when we come to church, we have a good time. I thank God for that. But I learned that uh, some men, they just put a mask. They put on a, a facade. How, uh, and, and also women. How are you doing? Everything is fine. Everything is, is good. But actually, deep down in their hearts, they are broken. Oh yeah, we have a good time at church. Yeah, okay. But uh, deep down in your heart, you just put on a professional smile. But actually, inside is broken. You, you, you don't want to just come to God as you are because you want to protect your image. <laughs> I learned from mighty men and women of God. I, I, I watched uh, some men of God that fell into sin and it's, 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 it's uh, heartbreaking. But at the same time, I also learned from many mighty men and women of God and I learned that one of the key uh, to, to, to uh, live under the... Uh, presence of God is you don't have to have the pressure to perform. My daughter is my wife. <laughs> I don't have to perform. I don't have the pressure to perform. Do you know the wishy-wick? Wishy-wick is what you see, what you get. What you see is what you get. So I am the same at home in the church, in the office, I'm the same Paul Tan. And because of that, I don't, I don't live under pressure. If I have to perform, then I have to act certain way when I'm at church. I have to act certain way when I'm preaching. But at home, they will talk to one another. Oh, hey, actually, daddy is not like that. Be a man, there is a pressure in itself. When I was a boy, you know, I was under pressure. You, don't you think as a boy you can be under pressure? I remember when I was a boy, my, my brother would, uh, would he, he did not bully me, but he would, I, I don't know what you call this, he would, he would, he would uh, uh, dare me, you know what I mean? Uh, hey, Paul, uh, you see that guy over there? Yeah. Uh, can you beat him up? I don't know the guy, you know. <laughs> and, uh, there was no emotional, uh, you know, anger or whatever. Uh, and uh, so I, I just kept quiet. And then, and, and then you know what my brother did? He did this. Ah, you're just afraid. Oh, that, 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 that word burned within me. So I walked towards, I, I, I beat up those, that, 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 that poor boy. <laughs> with no reason. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, be a man, uh, you, to be a man, you're, you're under, under certain pressure. When you, when you grow up as a teenager, you have a, you're, you have a pressure. When you, you, when you get married, you have, you have another pressure. And when you have a kid, you also have a pressure. When you have children, you, 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 have, you have pressure also. You know, when you get married, you, you become one. When you have one child, you become really one. When you have two kids, you become really, really one. <laughs> Some of you don't get it. <laughs> but my point is, you don't have to perform. But just, just allow the Holy Spirit to change you. He will change you. He will change, he, he change your character, your, your words, your vocabulary. Amen? And uh, no, no pressure. But uh, just just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you 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 uh, you're you're free from all those those pressures. No, 
because you still need to be a man. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, talking about masculinity, it, it has nothing to do with your muscle. It has nothing to do with your, uh, your hair. In the chest. It doesn't have anything to do with your bicep or your tricep. No, it has nothing to do with that at all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it has a lot to do with the inner man. And uh, God will help us. Man, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself too. We, we don't have to perform because uh, I'm not a superman. I'm not a superman. My, my children and my wife, they, they see me day in, day out as, as, as I am. And uh, it's hard to be a superman 24-7. <laughs> what happens when superman runs into kryptonite? What happened, man? Come on, be real to me. What, happen, what happens when you, man, face crisis? What happens when, when, uh, when, you, when you're trying to maintain your image so that people, that you will not disappoint people? You okay? I'm kind of tired to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> not only the musician, but the preacher also tired. <laughs> I, I'm going to, my wife and I are leaving for Indonesia tonight. And uh, last night, for some reason, I only slept for one and a half hours. But no excuse, okay? So, pray for me. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to perform, you know. And uh, when I say about pray for me, many times my daughters, my wife, they prayed for me because I'm not a superman. There were times that I, have, I, I, I went through, through, through challenges and they saw me when I was tired. They saw me when I was frustrated. They saw me when I was angry. They saw me when I needed help. They saw me when I was not feeling well, when I got sick, and they prayed for me, and we see miracles take place. And it, it is so releasing, you know, to, you don't have to perform. You don't have to perform. Oh, praise the Lord. And you don't need to maintain your image. Just come as you are. Come as you are, because as, as anointed as you are, as powerful as you are, as powerful as Elijah was, mighty prophet of God, mighty man of God, after he killed um, hundreds and hundreds of uh, the, the false prophets, the, uh, the 450 prophets of the Baal prophets, and then the 400 uh, prophets of the uh, Asherah, you know, after that, he hid himself, just like Adam. He hid himself in a cave. I'm convinced that the enemy wants to destroy man. And the difference between men and women, one of the differences uh, when man is discouraged, when man is discouraged, we did it quietly. We took it, we, inter, we internalized it. We didn't say it. How are you doing? I'm okay. Are you stressed? No. But how come, what happened with ulcers? Are you stressed? No, no, no. Are you depressed? No. But a lot of missiles in my head. Sign of stress. But when, when, when women are discouraged, they talk. 
they talk. They talk, 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 talk. <laughs> Again, this is not, this is not a, a, a criticism. This is an observation. <laughs> and it's good that you can talk. And I, I, I noticed that men, most men, most men, when I said most men is not 75%, I, I'm talking about above uh, uh, 95%, men don't have a friend. They don't know who to talk to. Oh, pastor, I thank God I'm married so I can talk to my wife. That's good. <laughs> but you also need to talk to a man. You also need great men to surround you so that you can grow to be a better man, a man of God. Oh, Jesus. I remember many years ago, a woman came to me and said, uh, <laughs> Pastor, I want to marry this man. This man is handsome. This man is tall. This, this man is uh, rich. And, uh, but this man is not in the Lord. Not only that, he has a tendency to be, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, violent. So I counseled her and I said, no, 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 I, I'm not going to, to, to marry you. And uh, she, she was polite. She said, okay, pastor, thank you very much. And uh, two or three days later, without my knowledge, she came to Pastor Tom and she counseled. Uh, Please, uh, Pastor Tom, would you marry us? And <laughs> without us knowing it, you know, he, he said the same thing. And lo and behold, this girl behind our... Uh, <laughs> Knowledge, you know, he, she talked to Pastor Him. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> and <laughs> we found out later. We found <laughs> oh, God, help us. <laughs> Thank God we are one. <laughs> and Pastor Him said the same thing. We give the same counsel, and uh, off she went, left the church got married in Las Vegas, but two and a half years later, I met her and she, she looked at me with her head down, Pastor, I should have listened to you because my ex-husband cut me with razor blade. So I called 911 and when Police came just a few minutes before police came. He also cut himself and he said that I cut him. So the police took me to the police car. Thank God the detective did, uh, uh, what do you call that? When the detective investigated, they found out, no, 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 this, the, 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 the cut in, 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 in on the man's hand is not that deep. So they switched and they got divorced. Have you ever read a book about... Uh, a man is from Mars and a woman is from Venus. We are different. We need one another. We need one another. Women, you, 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 you do not understand men. Men, you do not understand women. That's why we all need to be equipped with the Word of God. Somebody came to me and said, uh, uh, Pastor, um, my husband just, just, just left me. But three weeks ago was our anniversary, and he just bought me a diamond. But then uh, she divorced, she, she left me. Women think that if you manifest outward signs, you are inwardly happy. But a man can perform good outwardly. 
and be inwardly miserable. Sometimes it's hard for men to say, I'm sorry. Men would, would not say, I'm sorry, but men would just give women stuff. You know you make a mistake, you know you, you, need, you, you owe an apology, but you did not want to say, you did not want to humble yourself and say, I'm sorry. So you go home and you, you stop by the flower shop and you, you, you bought her flowers. You bought her dress. You bought her diamond. You bought her expensive stuff. I thank God my wife is not like that. I don't have to buy her expensive stuff. I don't have to buy her diamonds. She is low maintenance. <laughs> are you laughing with me or are you, are you laughing at me? <laughs> I still have a few more points. God help me. <laughs> oh God. I, I, I think I, I remember something. Uh, Lord help me. Most wives don't need your stuff. They need you. Man, I know what's in your mind. <laughs> Should I say it? No. <laughs> well, let me say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you men, some of you said, not my wife, pastor. My wife wants me and also my stuff. In our community, we suffer from disappearing fathers. Fathers who never show up. We suffer from men who make babies but don't take care of them. We suffer from absentee fathers. We suffer from silent fathers. It's not that they were not there. They just don't talk. Why? Because most men, they don't talk. They internal, internalize it. They just take it in, take it in. I don't know. Probably that's why there are more women in the world than men. <laughs> the men die first. <laughs> Women, they have a title to release. <laughs> I don't know. Forgive me. Oh, God, pray for me. I usually pray for you. Now you pray for me, okay? <laughs> and talking about the seminar, uh, and talking about so many absentee fathers and silent fathers, families, listen to me. Is it possible that our daughters have wrong perception about masculinity? Is it possible that our young women are hungry for male attention? Is it possible that they seek the attention in an inappropriate ways and they fall into mistakes and sins? And we as, as parents, we cover them. We didn't do nothing. Don't want to talk about the issue. So when we talk about the seminar, I notice there is something strange. When we have seminars like this, um, well, in the past we have other seminars, um, usually this is what I observe. Those people that I know that they need this training, they didn't show up. But those, the... the Die hearts, the one that is already good and they want to learn more, they show up. That is why sometimes pastor can operate in a holy choke. <laughs> Feel like I want to choke someone. You need to be here, you need to be here. <laughs> 
Oh, my God. I'm almost done. I'm going to be gone for two weeks, so. When I said I am, I'm, uh, I'm closing and the musician doesn't come forward, that means I can continue. <laughs> oh God, oh God. So the problem is, the strange thing is, uh, usually when people come to church, they, they know that they can get help from, but they, they didn't want to get help because they want to protect their image. What image? Come on, just come as you are. Don't just pretend. Don't just come as if you don't have any need. Don't just come as if, oh, I, I'm okay. I, I know about that. I can buy books. I, can, oh, I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, you can just Google it. You can learn it. But, but hey, this is, we are talking about we will grow as a church. Together, we will equip you as a church together. Oh. Thank you, Lord. But sometimes we, we hide our needs. It's just like going to a doctor. And uh, you go to see a doctor and then your doctor asks, How are you doing? Excellent, I'm fine. So why are you here? What's wrong with you? I'm not telling. But you come to see me. Well, uh, it's your job. Hey, come on. Is that... Some of our attitudes are like that. We just hide. 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 Oh. Let me close with this. This is my third closing. Most men don't have a friend, but I learned from the Bible that David has Jonathan. Many men, many leaders, many pastors, many successful business people, businessmen, when I got to get personal, most of them, most of them, aside from their successes, aside from their achievements, when I get into building the relationship with them, I found out that most of them are lonely. They have nobody to talk to, nobody to trust, nobody they could be transparent and open up to. The more influential, the more wealthy, the more it's just like people come and they just want something from them. That's why they are lonely. That's why many of them, they just stay in a cave. God is asking us right now, where are you? Where are you? And God talk to Moses to convey the message to the king of Egypt, let my people go. I pray right now that you are set free. You don't have to be in the cave anymore. Some of you have been in the cave for 20 years. You just keep it to yourself and you don't want to talk and you just, you, you don't know. And, and now, you know, again, the word of God can set you free. I'm not blaming anyone, but as, as we learn from the Word of God, we can be better men. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, God. God, I thank you. You are awesome, oh God. And we give you praise, Lord. We know, God, that you have a plan. Lord, we know that the seed... The seed, the male seed, has the power to bruise, to bruise the, the serpent, the enemy, Satan. And right now, God, I pray that we, we will come to you as we are. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to put a facade, but we come as we are, and uh, you will set us free. Lift up both of your hands, would you? And just like a welcoming, welcoming, lifting up hands. Here, we, here I am, Lord. Tell him, here I am, Lord. All of you men and women, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, oh God.
Thank you for your word. Now I know, God, that I am powerful. Now I know that the enemy has been trying to attack me. Now I know, God, that you have given me the power to overcome. Starting from me, starting from my home. And Lord, you will use me. Come on, this is your prayer. Come on, pray, pray with me. I, I, I'm praying with you. I'm facilitating the prayer right now. Yes, 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 Lord. And Lord, that we will become, we will grow and become men of integrity. Men of faith. Men that take responsibility. Men that can be trusted. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless your people. Every one of them, I pray, O oh God, that you bless them, you equip them, you, 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 have, you, you, you cause them to go home and to be used as a vessel, as a channel of your blessing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody shouted. Amen, amen. amen. God bless you.